please welcome the social juggernaut himself, Mr. Gary Bangashai. Oh my God! This is a big crowd. Gary B. Thank you very much for coming. Really appreciate it. This is, this is incredible because, uh, as Brendan mentioned, I've been working on this for the past six months. I actually met your team in New York City and uh, we jammed a little bit, so it was amazing. But uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this. I really want to give people a chance to ask you some questions later on, but I want to set some context for that because I don't know, probably there are some people that don't know you so much. So, uh, you know, the first thing that I want to talk about, I watched an interview uh, with, uh, that he did with uh, Tom from Impact Theory, and he did an incredible job. <laughs> and uh, one thing that uh, I really enjoyed was the uh, 51, 449, karma and practicality and all of these things. Could you just talk about that? Like, like being a nice person, bringing value first. Sure. First of all, thank you guys all so much for coming. It's, uh, it's awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I think karma is practical. You know, I'm, I'm confused by people's inability to understand how human beings work. And I think that a lot of the reason that startups are gonna fail at a record rate, which is exactly what's gonna happen over the next decade, is that so many people in this room are gonna build their business in the eyes of a VC, not in the eyes of the market. All of their behavior will be predicated on raising capital not on bringing value. You know, at its core, the reason I'm answering this question that way is you have to reverse engineer what you want. The greater your ambition for legacy and something meaningful, the greater you are as a person because it's really the only practical way to actually pull it off. Uh, you have to provide more value than you ask for in return. And so, for me, all I want to do is from a, you know, when I, I think about being an entrepreneur like being an athlete. I think about my life when I don't have my jersey on, and I think about when, my life when I have my jersey on. And when I'm an entrepreneur, when I put on my jersey in the morning, you know, there's two main goals in my mind. One, to build the greatest legacy of being an entrepreneur, what I would consider getting into the Hall of Fame. And, uh, and two, that's my macro, and my micro is to be successful that day, right? It's a day in, day out thing. So, yeah, I mean, my thesis is that I need to bring more value in my content. Uh, I need to bring more value to my employees. I need to bring more value to my clients. Uh, I prefer the leverage of being more valuable to you than you are to me. It's actually quite practical. If I'm more valuable to you than you are to me, that ultimately should work itself out for me in the long term. And I only play long term. Like really, really long term. Like, the end. <laughs> you know, and I, and I don't think most people do. I, I, I am so grateful that I'm wired and parented in a way where when I was making Fifty thousand dollars a year. That was like I just, I'm going to say something that confuses me. I just think fifty thousand dollars a year is enough money to live your life. I don't know. Like it's not enough if you want to have a fucking yacht in the fucking water out there. Um, but I I have not been driven by capital and money pretty much ever. Um, you know, look at my actions versus my words. I built my family's business to a much bigger business than it was. I entered my dad's business, it was doing three point something million dollars in sales. I left it as a business that was doing 60 million dollars in sales. I own zero percent of Wine Library. Right? Zero. I then started, on the back of what I was doing as a marketer, a new company called VaynerMedia. My brother, AJ, was graduating from college. He was no experience, no equity in the marketplace. We started VaynerMedia, and that company was 50-50. Like, I just am not driven by economics. And, um, and that's fine, because other, and by the way, if you are, great. It's just that I give more than I receive because it's the game of action playing. 
and you have to decide your game. If your game is predicated on you want to own a yacht and a nice home and a gold watch, then that's fine. Then you should care about short-term economics. Um, but short-term economic strategies leave you vulnerable. You know what I love about you? That you actually care about people. And there are two stories. So first, I don't know if you remember, but the first time we met was actually in Lisbon. So I was waiting for you at the speaker prep, and I just wanted to have the book signed. And we arrived late, the bodyguards were like, you know, pushing me to go in. And I told you like, hey Gary, I'm a big fan, I just want this book signed. And you said like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm speaking in like five minutes. But you went in, you just put your luggage there, and then you came out and signed my book. And the same thing happened, I have a friend, Ayush, over there, so I was sitting with him yesterday, and he took a selfie with you at Rice, and like, uh, then he, he tweeted it, and he liked his tweet. And he was like going crazy about it, you know? Like, he was like, oh! So, so like I, I love this about you that you actually spend the time. Now we're in a Tesla, we're driving here, and you're like just tweeting and like checking Instagram, and you're just doing it like all the time. The work ethic, you know, like you're just online all the time. If you were privileged enough for people to actually care that you like a tweet, <laughs> then you need to take that responsibility and do something with it. Like I will never take for granted. Like guys, I have been somebody who loved entrepreneurship, and, and I didn't call it entrepreneurship, I'm old, I'm 41, I call it being a businessman, right? This was and everything and anything I ever wanted to do. If you thought at any time in my teenage years that I thought that being a successful entrepreneur would lead to people treating you like a successful athlete or rock star, there was no part of the vision that that was gonna be any part of it. So the added value of admiration is such a cherry on top of, it's why I push people to do the thing they love the most. You don't know how the world's gonna play out. All my friends who are such unbelievable video game players in the 90s, whose parents made them stop playing video games to be a lawyer, none of us knew that eSports was coming. They could have been the Tony Hawk, <laughs> right? Like, you know, like you don't know where the world's going. Too many people make decisions on how the world is today, and they're making decisions about 14 years from now as if the world will stay still. So I can't wrap my head around taking for granted people thinking I'm cool, and I will work hard to show my gratitude for the rest of my life. Yeah, but also it's an amazing business strategy because we're just talking in a car about uh, you know Paul, uh, Jake Paul, and Logan, and they're just building an empire just by doing YouTube videos and engaging their fans and basically just like showing them the love. So it's an amazing business strategy at the same time. Yeah, but it's only a nuance. You can't show people love unless you did something that made them like you in the yeah. first place. Yeah. So what Jake and Logan Paul are, are incredible programmers and producers and content producers for a new environment. No different than Steven Spielberg and George Lucas were for the theater environment of the late 70s. Like, I think we underestimate what it takes to be a KOL uh, in today's environment. We think it's easy for some reason because it feels so remarkable that if you're cute or funny or what happened, like it just feels weird, right? Like, oh my God, like, you know, you're just charismatic or, or have a nice smile or a great figure and now all of a sudden you're making, you know, a lot of money. The reality is being pretty always made money. It was called modeling. <laughs> you know, like being funny always made money. You just did it on stage. That's what Richard Pryor and Murphy did, and now you know King Batch might just do it on Vine or Instagram. Like nothing's new. The mediums are new. Do not have the audacity to underestimate what it takes to have enough success that a lot of people pay attention to you. Do not underestimate that. You're thrilled to, but the market is smarter than you.